Welcome all of you, the viewers of Poland Daily Culture. My name is Maria Kondzielska and today we're talking about music and organs and how to play the organs. With us is Anna Przybysz, a professional concert organist. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. And when you're looking back in time from, from the moment when you decided to play organs until today, uh, what was the turning turning point in your career, like a moment when you decided to become actually a professional musician instead of doing it, I would say, as an element of education and studies? I'm playing piano since I was four years old, so I couldn't decide if I want to do it or not. So I was a child who was playing, we had a piano at home and I was just playing by heart uh, songs from radio or from the services, so I could just sit and play and singing together and my parents uh, they thought, oh, it's something incredible, so we have to go with her to the music schools. And I started music school at the age of five, so two years very before, early. very early. And this uh, point in my career was in 2013, when I decided to go abroad for a study. So I started my studies uh, at the Music University in Warsaw. And then I had an opportunity to go abroad for Erasmus exchange. And after one year of Erasmus, I decided to stay in Germany for a master degree. Together, I was studying four years in Germany and it was the best time for me because they've got a lot of historical instruments. And I've played a concert every three weeks on historical instruments like uh, in the Thomas Church when the Bach was the organist, for example. So I felt a bit like Bach <laughs> during a concert and it was to thousand people in the church. So it was wow. this moment Fabulous. when I thought, okay, I'm practicing all the time, so I have no private life, but it's worth it. <laughs> How did you choose for this? I was a pianist uh, for 10 years. And after 10 years, uh, I played one during the service in the church in my little small village near to Warsaw. Uh, so an organist asked me because he wanted to, to go for a short holiday. And he said, Anna, you are playing piano, so you will be able to play an organ as well. And uh, he learned me everything, how to, to play all things and sing also. and. I started to play in the church uh, when I was 13 and it was amazing for me. So this huge sound, this feeling that I'm playing and 500 or 1000 people are singing together with me. So I felt so powerful and I wanted to change the piano for an organ. So it was a time for me for, for a change and I changed music school and instrument too. Were there any mentor or master of yours who inspired you, especially during the studies in, in Germany? Mm, yes. So this is the professor from Leipzig, Martin Schmeling. I was studying in his class and he showed me that organ music, it's really important, but only part of our life. So you have to have a normal life to uh, visit a city, to meet in people to, to be a better musician because we are so concentrated on only practicing during studies. Like I had a colleagues uh, and they were practicing 10 hours per day. So it's really enormous. And he said, no, sorry, you have to have a balance in life to, to enjoy this music. So to, it should be a part, very important part, but only part of your life. But it's an interesting uh, element and point which, which, which he passed to you, the fact that the musician cannot be only someone like a machine yeah. who only practice. It's the most important when you are playing. So you can play like a computer, but the computer will play in the same way. So the most important is to show something from yourself to the audience and they are waiting for these unique moments when you are playing. So we are saying that the uh, first five seconds is the more important in playing. And after these five seconds, you can decide, okay, I would like to hear her or him or not. We know already that you are a first musician and the only musician, I mean, you're the only Polish woman who qualified it for the Boston Bach organ competition. Tell us what is this competition and what does it mean to participate in it? Mm, it's a huge honor to me to take part in because uh, it's like I'm saying, it's like a Chopin competition in Poland for a pianist. This is the Bach competition for an organist. But you can say that only 17 people are invited to take part in this organ competition. But why? We need a lot of time to practice before every round. So 
we need about five hours before the first and second and third round. So when you are inviting 17 people, it takes almost one week of just practicing before. <laughs> and we need also uh, somebody who is turning pages and changing stops. So we are not alone during a concert. So sometimes you need one or two person who helps you with playing. And because of that, we need uh, a rehearsal longer than any other instruments because they are playing by heart and we are playing with scores because we are writing down what sound you would like to create on this type of organ and so it has to be written down <laughs> for an assistant also. Wow, so it is like, a, I would say, an element of creating it yes. during the concert. Yes. I'm like, I can say that, okay, the scores are the same, but every of us, every of these 17 people uh, who are taking part in can create totally different music landscape and music sound. And this is also uh, important for the jury. Okay, she or he can play very good, but what she can offer to us maybe something in a historical way or her own way so why are is this more a man's vocation man's job to do uh to play organs usually in my opinion you need more power to play organ because as i said a lot of keyboards you play with hand uh, and legs and uh, my professor said always to me anna you have to eat more before a concert <laughs> because you will have no power so i was eating like banana or chocolate during the concert really because it's also uh, nice that we are hidden at the choir so nobody is seeing us when we are playing organ <laughs> they can do a lot of things they're like yes <laughs> <laughs> something in an energy drink or a coffee and also you mentioned that organs are older than piano yeah it's the oldest one instrument in the world wow uh, and the biggest one <laughs> and the most remarkable <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> but uh so tell us a little bit about all, all the like the organs himself the instrument how many keys do you have uh, what, the, what are the pipes? What's going on there? So uh, in Baroque time, uh, we had a mechanical action, a sound and keyboard action. And it does mean that when you press the key, it's very hard to play organ. Uh, in Romantic time, we had pneumatic and electropneumatic action. So it was lighter to play, but um, the time, the acoustic would be longer because you press the key and you have to wait a few seconds and then you can hear the sound from the church or, uh, or concert hall. So it's a bit harder to play on pneumatic organ. And nowadays we've got electronic uh, action. So you press and you hear at the same time and it's very light. <laughs> But uh, about uh, how many key we've got, so it depends on how uh, much money do you have, because it's really, um, it costs really much money, like millions. So uh, if you've got enough money, you can build the biggest one organ is in Atlanta and they've got seven keyboards for hands and one uh, for, for legs, because this is the most difficult thing on playing organ. We use our both legs to playing organ. Tell me if you have seven keyboards and how do you play on seven keyboards? It has a very long hands. So it's like the first is here, second, and it's um, up, yes, it's up this seven manual. So it's not hard to play, but you have to play in this position. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's not so it's challenging. Yes. <laughs> so which organs are the best? And uh, for you, for example. So uh, it's hard to say which organ are the best because uh, you can play Baroque music on baroque organ so it sounds the best so if you like to play for example Bach you would like to go to Germany for typical like Zilberman or Schnitger or Stellwagen organ and it sounds the best and my beloved organ uh, are built by Wilhelm Sauer and it was a German late romantic organ builder and um, these instruments are near to Leipzig. Looking at where you are right now you are just in front of ba Boston Bach organ competition which will hope Hopefully you will win, but what are your plans for the future? I would like to find a position at the university, so it's my biggest dream. I would like to also finish my organ box with Karl Hoyer music. Uh, I would like also to publish my book about Karl Hoyer. And if I had a lot of power and courage, I would like to study jazz singing. <laughs>
<laughs> just singing? Yeah. Well, that's that. There's nothing to do with organs. Yeah. Well, when you're an organist, you have to sing also, but <laughs> it's my dream. So if I would not be an organist, I could be a just... That's a shift in your career. (laughs) Well, fingers crossed for anything what you will be doing. But talking about music is one thing. The most important is, of course, to listen to music. So right now we invite you, the viewers of Poland Daily, to a concert of Anna Przybysz. Listen how she plays right now in Poland Daily. And thank you for watching our show.